Hey guys, what's up? My name is Hayden from the Magical Killer Cow YouTube channel and today I am back with another Team Fortress 2 gameplay commentary for you guys to watch and enjoy this one. Slightly different to the usual you would see on this video channel page thing. I completely screwed up that intro, but basically Ready Steady Pan I completed or UCN had finished the Ready Steady Pan match one or round one uh, of season two. Uh, about an hour ago. I'm quite tired right now, but I felt like commentating it and I felt this was an awesome way to start it just because of how awesome it is. We have the soldier and myself jumping in the air and then we have two scouts, a sniper and another down man. So I have keys bound to all of these awesome buttons. Now I'm not used to shoutcasting and I have no idea how I'm supposed to do this, like at what camera angles I'm supposed to be looking or who I'm supposed to be watching at certain times. So I'll try my best. Basically, if you're unfamiliar with the Ready Steady Pan competition, Ready Steady Pan is basically a 6v6 tournament where everybody gets a pan and there is absolute complete mayhem and everybody just runs at each other and whacks each other with pans. And basically, the winner... I don't even know what the winners get, but just for participating, you get a badge. That was enough to convince me and everybody else in UCN. We all joined and signed up for this tournament quickly after uh, it became announced for the European scene. And here I am trying to battle that scout, him running away. There are some exceptions to just being allowed to use the pan. You can use uh, like the Criticola, the Sticky Jumper, Rocket Jumper, Girati, and there's a couple of things that you can use. They're all specified on the rules page of the Ready Steady Pan competition page, which if you would like to go see, uh, signups are closed because the matches have started, but hopefully you can sign up for Season 3 uh, next season, uh, you can just go ahead and check out pan.int.tuff. Uh, I'll leave a link in the, the description bar down below. But yeah, it's a pretty awesome tournament. Even though this was just our first match, it was quite fun to play. And um, yeah, it's quite fun. I did actually try to record this about uh, 20 minutes ago, and some for some reason my monitor just crapped itself, crashed TF2, like loads of things just randomly went weird, my resolution changed, but hopefully that's all sorted now. See, we kept having a problem with not only the scouts, but the Girati, and everybody would crowd onto the point to cap, everybody would get Giratied, and then everybody would die, and it'd be the same for the scouts. Two scouts, or just one scout, there was a scout in a yellow clothing, I guess, um, I think it's, is it that scout? I don't know. Let me go, tr go try find him. Uh, I'll show you what he looks like. This guy, Heavenly. This guy was wrecking our team so much to the point where just him could take out our entire team. Uh, UCN Stock does manage to kill him there, but for the most part, one Girati would be thrown onto the point and that scout, Heavenly, would take everybody else out. And that was a massive problem and that delayed us so much, which is why the result of this um, game is quite interesting. It is 20 minutes long, so you can expect that we did put up quite a decent fight, I'd say. Um, and probably not the best, we could probably improve in some directions, I guess. But just basically watch to the end and you'll see why this is quite a fun game to play and quite interesting to play as well. Um, I was going to upload the team communications of a team speak. I did record those and like I did with the wire play tournament, um, I'd show what I was doing um, and I'd show the team speak communications, what everybody was talking about at the same time. And whilst this was a good idea, I did realize that I don't think you guys would want to listen to it. It was basically everybody singing because nobody could take this seriously. So we were all singing about random stuff. Uh, we were just talking, we were shouting at each other, and there, were, <laughs> there was no real communication going on. It was just a lot of, this is a panning competition where we just have to pan people. There is no way we can take this seriously, so let's start singing a song. Now, we actually have two songs bound into the UCN tradition. One of them is the... Um, our winning song, which we used once in the Wireplay tournament, the first round we played, uh, when we actually won, which was quite nice. And uh, we used that, and that was actually um, "You wa She Walks Right Through Me by Alex Day, if anybody wants to go listen to that. And we actually have a song from Mulan, I think that's the film, I don't know. Um, but 
I didn't even know that we had this song until I joined the team speak because I don't I haven't really been speaking with UCM that much uh, lately. You know, obviously I've been working on a lot of things. There's been some things going on about the uh, charity live stream that I did on Saturday, well last Saturday. I've still been going around uh, sorting a couple things out through that because you do you don't see the work that went into that. There was about t over 200 hours prior to it. Uh, you know, just working throughout the day on uh, getting people and talking to people. And then, you know, I've done a couple of stuff after it, uh, just discussing with some other people about future events, possibly. Uh, but <laughs> I don't want to say too much about that, because that could be quite interesting. But we are coming up to the f uh, end of the first round of... Um, well, not the first round. Yeah, the first round. It's a... Um, right. This is what I don't understand. Like... Is this class as a round? One round is when it gets to the end of three minutes. I'd say I'd class that as a round. A match is the entire match we played, and the season is the entire season. So the match is containing of all. It's the best of three, basically. The best two, three. So the first person who can get to three. I don't know why I had to specify that three times. Uh, three. Valve Cat Count three. Level three Sentry Gun. Think about that. Uh, <laughs> so it is the first person to get to three wins, um, which, you know, it seems quite easy to do, but there is a lot of fighting involved. It can take quite a while with overtime and everything. And, you know, it really is just about putting up an awesome defense whilst also being able to attack the point as well. I personally didn't do that well. If we go ahead and press tab, I love this. Source TV demos. Thank you. Whoever created Source TV, I don't even know. You are a lifesaver. Look at this. You, uh, normal demo files, if you're unfamiliar with them, you can't actually load up and look at the menu screen thing with all the scores and ping and everything. I like this. It's awesome. And I'd love that if that was implemented into the actual demo recording. But apparently that isn't something that happens and that's not something they do. And that annoys me because it's a really useful feature. Because I can have a look at how many points I've got and how many points they have and all that stuff, which is pretty nice. So, uh, we seem to be having a bit of a mid-fight. Let me just try position myself. There you go. Just have a look at all the panning going on. They captured the point, of course. And they kept capping the point a lot, and it was quite frustrating because, like, one person had died on our team, then the next one, then the next, and by the time we knew it, the entire team was wiped out, they'd captured the point, and it was just quite treacherous, really. Is treacherous a word? I don't know. That's a cool word. Uh, <laughs> I am quite tired right now, as I said, uh, it's been quite a long day, uh, just been sort of doing some random stuff throughout the day, plus, um, you know, just trying to do this, actually playing this, actually took a lot out of me, you know, sitting in team speak, talking with people, trying to communicate as well as I could, it just didn't sort of work. I was sort of trying to take it seriously, and then after the first round I realised, this is a competition where all I have to do is spam f uh, left click and things die. I can't take this seriously. That's just phys physically, physically impossible. But it was a lot of fun. Um, if you guys are thinking about getting into competitive, and I know I say this every competitive game I play, but just do it. Get together with a bunch of friends or find somewhere, there is like the ETF2L forum board where you can actually find a recruitment section where people will actually recruit people and they're looking for people to join their team. And be sure to just go ahead, check over there, look at the things that are going on, look at uh, sort of the people they want. Like I'm actually going to be looking there quite uh, soon actually for an engineer spot, which I mentioned in yesterday's video, you know, looking to play engineer on a team, pro probably Div 6, but it's a great place to find people to play with, you get to meet new people, which is awesome, and you do just enjoy yourself a lot more when you play competitive, because you can join random pub games, and you can either get completely stumped, or you could completely steamroll, but as soon as you get into the competitive scene, you don't feel like it's ridiculously easy or it's ridiculously hard. Like sometimes, you know, it can be quite difficult and it be, can be quite a push to actually manage to kill things. But you kind of feel that what you're training for and what you're playing for actually amounts to something. And the more you play, the better you'll get, which means the better you'll be able to do in competitive games and matches that actually matter. And I love the fact that in some competitive games, um... Like, you actually win prizes for it. The Wireplay competition host uh, gives out servers, which is pretty awesome. I'm actually a Wireplay admin and a Gamers United admin now, if anybody was wondering about that. Uh, I've been a Wireplay admin for quite a while. I just recently got a Critscast admin slash Gamers United admin. 
uh, about a week ago, which I was actually on the Critscast last week, so critscast.com if you want to go watch that. And if you've made it this far into the video, then be sure to comment down below with... Um, I need a keyword. Hose. H-O-S-E. Um, just because why not? It's quite an interesting uh, word to talk about. But I've realised I'm looking at UCN MCS too much. I need to look at their team and how pro their team is. So, Heavenly is at the top of their leaderboard. I'm going to look at him because I'm kind of curious on what some sort of some of the things he sort of did um, throughout the game, you know, because he was absolutely stomping us so hard, we couldn't do anything about it. So I want to go ahead and have a look at what he's doing. He was actually running the Criticola and the Frying Pan, which basically means that he can uh, deal crits to the team. And we realised that that's a good idea, and we should use that. We should use the tactic of uh, putting uh, one of our scouts on Criticola and one of them on Mad Milk, because... They have crits, they can do a lot of damage, one of them has mad milk so we can get health from them and that was just sort of a smart thing. Look at this, Heavenly pulling out the crits, he completely wipes out pretty much our entire team. That was quite horrible, like we came close, we we're about 30 seconds off and we just couldn't do anything because he was completely wrecking us the entire time. That was quite upsetting but I didn't really mind, it was quite fun. I just realised that they're actually using the voice communications in game, like not like any third party program like Mumble or TeamSpeak. So that's quite interesting. Like I don't think I know many um, competitive teams that actually do that. But uh, yeah, that's quite cool. So, Heavenly, uh, I think we've established that he's pretty awesome and he can wipe out everything. The main problem I had was since it makes the noise of hitting somebody when you hit your own team, I didn't know if I was hitting my team or the enemy. So I was just sort of spamming into a crowd of people, hoping that I was actually dealing damage. I personally wasn't sure if anybody was dying from it. I just sort of had to swing and hope, I guess, and uh, hope that something died under my regards because that would be quite cool. Um, it was a lot of demo men jumping over us, soldiers jumping over us, scouts getting behind us, us having to spin around, try to kill them fail miserably, everybody die and run away. And look at this, we were so close at capping this. Um, and then just one scout, one scout can do it. Go on, UCN MCS could do it. There was no chance. Then UCN Seon, or UCN Mad Peanut, uh, also known as Seon. It, we, everybody was shouting at him because he was the only one alive and we was hoping that maybe he could do something. But uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and fly over to mid because I'm pretty sure pro casters just fly through walls like that. Um, yeah, I don't know what what's a good angle to take. I kind of want to have a look at where they're coming from because I don't really care about what we did. We did horribly, let's just say that. Um, <laughs> it wasn't much of a fight for us, I guess. It was mainly... Uh, well, it wasn't much of a fight for them. It was mainly us dying over and over and pretty much feeding them the kills. Um, but yeah, we managed to kind of overtake them on this first sort of little push. We managed to Jurati them, wipe out the majority of their team, then scouts appear. We can't deal with scouts that well. A soldier is now jumping in. There was nothing we could, could do. I was the last one alive. I managed to take out one scout, but then Heavenly gets behind me and does manage to kill me. Now, UCN stock randomly switched to Spectator. We didn't have any clue what he was doing. He was shouting about how he wanted to take scout and uh, UCN Mad Peanut to take uh, soldier? No, Demo Man. Um, which is quite interesting. I kind of want to watch uh, UCN Mad Peanut a bit here because watching him was quite fun. So he's going to be switching up to the frying pan, of course, because this is ready, steady pan. And the sticky jumper. Here we go. He throws down a sticky bomb, goes straight into that wall. Very nice. We're going to go ahead and run out to mid here. Sticky jump around, doesn't know what's going on. Just spinning around, whacking his own teammate. And it was quite entertaining whenever I died to just look at UCN Mad Peanut. And even though I wasn't doing the best on the team, I knew that I wasn't doing as bad as UCN Mad Peanut because that is something that I enjoy to have. Like, under my belt, so I can say, you know what, even if I didn't do too well, I still was better than Mad Peanut. Because, <laughs> basically, nobody practiced for this. And it may sound stupid that you have to practice for ready, steady panning. You have to practice panning people. But you do kind of have to pay attention, learn, like, the swinging times and everything. And you do actually need to sort of know what you're on about and how to play with a pan to be able to get anything done. And everybody else has just been playing uh, League of Legends for like a couple of months now. Most of UCN don't really play TF2 anymore, which is why we don't really do competitive. 
the Digital Flows YouTube channel hasn't really done anything there anymore for a while. He has made a change that 2013 will be a big change to his channel and all that stuff. But, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of sad that UCN has stopped playing Team Fortress 2 as much because League of Legends, I've tried it a couple of times. Uh, I'm not really good at RTSs. Is it an RTS? I don't know. I don't care. It's It's not a fun game at all for me personally. And I don't really want to be playing it. So, I don't know. It's not something that I'll follow with. And that's why I really haven't been talking with the majority of UCN recently that much anyway. It's because I don't play League of Legends and that's all that they're playing. And it is sort of a shame because UCN was really a starting ground for me to play Team Fortress 2. I met so many awesome people. I got some free stuff off them, which is cool. Um, and you know, just communicating and talking with them, it was sort of just a bunch of people that I could play Team Fortress 2 with. And now that I've sort of progressed through Team Fortress 2, and I've picked up a slight amount of skill, and I can sort of do some things by myself. I feel better, and I don't feel as reliant on UCN, but I do still feel that it's kind of a bunch of friends playing TF2 and if you play TF2 alone all the time it gets boring really quickly like as soon as um like League of Legends became a thing in UCN and most of them started playing League of Legends and I was playing TF2 I felt very alone and jumping onto server onto servers really there was nobody I could share my accomplishments with like if I got an awesome air shot or like a chain stab or anything there was nobody I could share that with and when you play with friends, you know, they can see it, you can tell them about it, and you sort of feel better about playing. And, I don't know, it was just sort of something weird that I thought I'd mention, because playing with friends in TF2 is a big thing. It is Team Fortress 2. It's about working as a team, it's about playing together, and without playing together and working as a team, you just cannot have fun in Team Fortress 2. Personally, that's just my personal experience, and that's how I feel when I play. That's probably not the same for everybody, but whatever. Uh, it was quite an interesting um, thing that I just thought I'd point out, because it's just sort of how I feel, and I like telling you guys how I feel and my opinions on things on this channel, because, you know, this is just sort of a channel where I can talk about anything that's on my mind, and I like that, and how supportive you guys are about that, because you guys support the fact that I can talk about what I want, I have opinions, and I can just talk about them. And uh, as you can see, Heavenly puts it's tea time uh, into chat room because he got quite angry at us before the match, I don't know why, but uh, bas basically he called us um, fucking uh, tea friends or something. I found that quite entertaining. They, not many of them actually spoke that much interesting, uh, interesting English, so <laughs> that was quite interesting uh, to listen. Um, to them and like try communicate with them because I, I struggle with talking with foreigners um, and people that don't speak fluent English just because um, I don't know it's just that I, there's always some sort of mistake and I misinterpret what they say and it is just difficult but my name has been Hayden thank you all so much for watching this has been me ranting about the ready steady pan tournament competition thing if you guys would like to see more of this then be sure to subscribe up above and drop a like down below and comment and all that good stuff mine has been Hayden the Source TV demo will end here thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all in the next one